The Quotient Rule, Level 3. In this video, we will tackle on problems that require us to use a set of values and graphs to find the derivative of a function. Let's first go over examples that require us to use a set of values to find the derivative. If f of x equals h of x over x, where h of 2 equals 4, and h prime of 2 equals negative 3, find f prime of 2. Alright, here we are asked to find the derivative of f evaluated at x equals 2. Let's first find the derivative of f of x before we attempt to evaluate it. Notice that f of x is formed by the quotient of two functions. In this case, we have h of x and x. This means that we have to apply the quotient rule. Applying the quotient rule, we obtain the following expression for the derivative. Note that we could also rewrite this function with the denominator written as a negative exponent. In this case, we would have to apply the product rule. For this example, let's continue on with the quotient rule. Having found an expression for the derivative, we go ahead and evaluate it at x equals 2. From the given values, we know that h prime of 2 is equal to negative 3, and h of 2 is equal to 4. Substituting these expressions and simplifying, we obtain negative 5 as our final answer. Alright, let's try another example. If f of x equals 1 over g of x, where g of 0 equals 2, and g prime of 0 equals 1, find f prime of 0. Alright, here we have a function that contains the constant 1 in the numerator, and the function g of x in the denominator. Technically, this is still a quotient of two functions, so we go ahead and find an expression for the derivative by making use of the quotient rule. Applying the quotient rule, we obtain the following. Notice that we could also have identified this function as a reciprocal function and made use of the reciprocal rule. Regardless of the rule that you applied, you should end up with the following expression for the derivative negative g prime of x over g of x squared. Next, we need to find the derivative of f evaluated at x equals 0. So we go ahead and substitute the values provided to us. g prime of 0 is going to be equal to 1, and g of 0 is going to be equal to 2. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the final value equal to negative 1 fourth. Alright, now let's deal with a different type of problem. Let's go over problems that require us to use the graphs to find the derivative of the given function. Let q of x equal f of x over g of x. Find q prime of 4 by using the graphs of f and g. Alright, in this example, we are provided with a graph of f of x and g of x. We need to use these graphs to find the value of q prime evaluated at x equals 4. Let's first find an expression for the derivative of q of x before we start analyzing the graphs. Notice that q of x is formed by the quotient of f of x and g of x, so we naturally need to apply the quotient rule. Applying the quotient rule, we obtain the following expression for the derivative. Next, we need to evaluate this derivative at x equals 4. In order to evaluate it, we need values for g of 4, f of 4, and their respective derivatives evaluated at x equals 4. We will obtain these values from the graph of f of x and g of x. Let's first find g of 4 and f of 4. These values are essentially the y coordinate of the functions at x equals 4. So looking at the graph, we see that g of 4 is equal to 3, and f of 4 is equal to 7. Now let's find the values for the derivative of f of x and g of x. Recall that the geometric interpretation of the derivative is represented by the slope of the tangent line to the curve of the function at a particular value of x. This means that f prime of 4 represents the slope of the tangent line to the curve of the function at x equals 4. We can calculate the slope of the tangent line at this point by calculating the rise over the run. In this case, it is going to be equal to negative 1 over 1, which is just equal to negative 1. 
In the same manner, g prime of 4 can be calculated by finding the slope of the tangent line on the curve g of x at x equals 4. Looking at the graph of g of x, we see that the slope at this point is going to be equal to 0, since the slope is flat at this point. Having found all the required values, we go ahead and substitute them into our expression for the derivative, evaluated at x equals 4. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the final answer equal to negative one third. All right, make sure you understand the difference between a function evaluated at a given value of x and a derivative of a function evaluated at a given value of x. The first represents the y coordinate of the function being evaluated at the specific value of x, and the later represents the slope of the tangent line to the curve of the function at that specific value of x. All right, let's go over the final example. Let q of x equal f of x over g of x. Find q prime of 7 by using the graphs of f and g. Okay, similar to the previous example, we need to find the derivative of this function evaluated at a specific value of x. Let's first find the derivative of q of x. The derivative of this function is essentially going to be the same as the previous example. It is just a matter of applying the quotient rule. Applying the quotient rule, we obtain the following expression. Having found an expression for the derivative, we go ahead and evaluate it at x equals 7. For this, we need to find g of 7, f of 7, g prime of 7, and f prime of 7. Let's first find g of 7 and f of 7. These values represent the y coordinate of each curve at x equals 7. In this case, g of 7 is going to be equal to 4. In the same manner, f of 7 is also going to be equal to 4, since the curve of f of x and g of x intersect at exactly the same point. Now we need to find the derivative of f of x at x equals 7. Once again, this is essentially going to be the slope of the tangent line of the red curve at x equals 7. We can find the rise over the run from two points on the curve to calculate the slope of the tangent line. In this case, the slope has a rise of 2 and run of 1. In other words, 2 over 1, or simply just 2. In the same manner, the derivative of g of x at x equals 7 can be found in the same way. In this case, it is going to be equal to negative 1 over 1, or simply negative 1. Having found the values of the functions and their derivatives, it is just a matter of simplifying the expression and reducing the fraction. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 3 fourths. All right, keep in mind that whenever you need to find the derivative of a function formed by a quotient of functions, you need to make use of the quotient rule. In our next video, we will learn how to deal with functions formed by a composition of functions.